When I was younger, uh, my family, uh, my extended family, we went away for an anniversary trip for my grandparents. It was their 50th anniversary, so we all spent the week up in upstate New York. And at the end of the week, we had a big, you know, fun ceremony with all the family members and all the aunts and uncles awarded the children with, you know, made up medals for their hobbies and what they're interested in. And I was awarded the Steven Spielberg Award. He is one of my favorite directors of all time, probably the most influential filmmaker in my childhood. Uh, and going to film school later in my life and, you know, experiencing the industry, I noticed that a lot of... Um, film snobs or, you know, pretentious film circles or just certain circles in general tend to knock Spielberg down a little bit. You know, they don't want to admit that, you know, he's this great director. They tend to go to the more the pretentious route. They want to talk about, you know, the, the, the Kubricks of the world. And I'm not knocking Stanley Kubrick. Trust me, we will do plenty of his films. But they tend to take Spielberg and, and say, oh, he's just a blockbuster filmmaker. He just does big, big movies. And, you know, he's proven himself to not be that. But that is a lot of the stigma he receives. And I'm here to say that if you analyze Steven Spielberg movies, um, and we'll see it in this film, his shots are masterful. Uh, he's the king of the Steven Spielberg oneer, the one take shot that he does, but you don't notice it while you're watching the movie because he's so uh, amazing at disguising his shots in favor of the story. You know, you could watch Goodfellas and see the one shot that Scorsese does. It's amazing, you know, with Ray Liotta going into the restaurant. Uh, a lot of films these days, especially in the last 10, 15, 20 years, have used a lot of amazing one takes. Children of Men, uh, 1917. Uh, there's a ton of movies that have outstanding one-take uh, shots. But the thing about Steven Spielberg is he isn't making the shot the important, the most important thing of that moment. It's the story. It's the staging. His shots are so perfect, you almost don't even realize what's happening. Um, and I also will have to say about Steven Spielberg is that he's one of the few directors... Um, especially as of late. I'm not a big fan of his new stuff. I kind of break it up. I have old Spielberg and I have new Spielberg. Old Spielberg to me kind of was cut off, I would say, Minority Report Munich. Um, he's had good films after that. Do not get me wrong. I'm not knocking him down saying he turned into this terrible filmmaker. But I think in his younger, earlier days is where he was able to capture what I call literal magic. You hear movie magic. You hear these terms. And I think Spielberg comes closest to really transcending the art form. Close Encounters of the Third Kind, moments in that movie, the opening sequence, E.T., the shots that we remember, a Jurassic Park. There's these iconic moments, these sequences, these, these takes. Just I don't know what he does. He just taps into something. He was able to capture something that transcends decades and just if, embeds itself into our culture. And, and that, to me, is just the ultimate... Uh, you know, achievement for a filmmaker. And let's not talk, let's not forget his diversity. You know, you have the blockbuster summer, you know, escapades, the adventure movies, the, the, the amazing, you know, films that he did that, you know, became cultural phenomenons. And then you have his, you know, Schindler's List, his Saving Private Ryan's, his, you know, Amistad's, even if they weren't the best movie as his, he was able to capture, you know, drama and, and these essences. I mean, in the movie Lincoln with Daniel Day-Lewis, which isn't a favorite movie of mine, has amazing moments, you know, that he's just, Steven Spielberg is as diverse as you get when you look at his the pantheon of films. You know, his filmography is just, you know, it's like the Beatles. It goes from, you know, this genre to that genre, to this style, to this style, from horror to comedy, to adventure, to war. It just captured everything. He's had some flops, you know, in his early days and his later days, but as far as, you know, filmmaking goes, you know, Steven Spielberg is Steven Spielberg. What can you say? But today we are here to discuss Raiders of the Lost Ark. Too bad the Jovitos don't know you the way I do, Belloc. Yes, too bad. You could warn them if only you spoke Jovitos. Hokana Matuso! Nobata! <laughs> this movie is amazing. Everyone and their mothers has seen it. I'm not going to get into the plot. It's really simple. You have this brilliant archaeologist who's also a, you know, I don't want to say a, a grave robber. He's a, uh, 
a searcher of antiquities and he believes a lot of the artifacts in the world belong in a museum he respects them he loves history but he also has a rush for the adventure and this was the first installment in this series uh personally it's my favorite installment i think it's the most masterfully done i love class crusade i think last crusade is really close um but you know in temple of doom as far as a nostalgic purposes i know it gets a lot of heat but i love that movie i saw it when i was younger there's moments in it that are just badass and awesome classic indie but raiders of the lost ark is just up here on another level from the cinematography to the directing to the music to the staging to the characters the casting everything just came together and gave us this old style adventure uh feeling movie that you would have gotten in like the 40s and the 50s and brought into modern day at the time and it really was just a perfect storm of events was undisturbed and the undisturbed chamber and the grave goods that were found in another uh, in the area give us a uh, Obviously, George Lucas was a huge influence. It essentially was his idea. He who has his fingerprints all over this movie, and it was a brilliant decision of his. I'm not sure really if it was his decision, but it was a brilliant move to have Steven Spielberg come in and direct this movie. And of course, let's not forget Philip Kaufman, who helped the story with George Lucas as well. Because as much as George Lucas is an imaginative genius, uh, his directing and his dialogue uh, really uh, doesn't... It, leaves a lot to be desired. He does have some great moments. I love THX 1138. I love his directing of Star Wars A New Hope. And I previously in my Star Wars movies, um, the prequels that he did could have been a lot better, I think, if someone had directed it. So George Lucas, to me, his imagination is priceless. And the story he came up with for Raiders of the Lost Ark was amazing. And that brings me to Lawrence Kasdan. And I cannot not keep him out of this talk because he's the one who actually wrote the script and adapted George Lucas's screenplay. So give him all the credit in the world for really adding a lot of these intricacies and these, you know, fleshed out characters and this well-paced story that you can ship off to Spielberg and then just do what he will with it. You know, really, you got to give Lawrence Kasdan a lot of credit. And he's got a great uh, history when it comes to the industry. <laughs> Like I said, it was a perfect storm of events and Spielberg just put the cherry on top and took over and just made it his. Good evening, Fraulein. The bar is closed. We are, we are not thirsty. What do you want? Um, but going back to the story, basically you have Indiana Jones, this archeologist and treasure hunter, basically uh, gets contracted by the U.S. government to get into a race with the Nazis to find the Ark of the Covenant, which apparently Hitler is looking for, for its supernatural abilities to give him power to take over the world. Tannis development proceeding. Acquire headpiece, staff of Ra, Abner Ravenwood, U.S. Nazis have discovered Tannis. Awesome plot. Can't get much better than that. It's got everything in it. And then you just add all the ingredients. Um, this movie really has embedded itself in our culture. I think it's inspired countless filmmakers. It's inspired countless writers. And, you know, it gave us Indiana Jones. Uh, you really can't ask for much more than that. John Williams' score in this movie really just, you know, matches all his other amazing works. The beats, the way his... And the thing with John Williams, I think, is a lot of films, you have a composer comes in and he gives you this amazing composition over this movie. But with John Williams, and specifically in his work with Spielberg, the score almost became a character of its own. Uh, let's take the chase scene, for example, in Raiders of the Lost Ark. There's a video on YouTube, and if I find it, I will put it in this description, that just breaks down the score in that whole sequence and how it really just, you know the certain instruments come in at certain moments, the way the things slow down, the pace, it just is so intertwined with the way Spielberg staged the, the, the scenes and shot the scenes and John Williams just kind of this like pushing his score and his notes, threading it throughout and bringing it down when it needs to go down, bringing it up, just elevated the whole scene and the whole movie in my opinion. <laughs> have the whole opening scene in the jungle that sets the tone of the adventure the the abilities of Indiana Jones you know what kind of tone are we going with here what kind of feel 
you know, you have this temple and the amazing boulder rolling out and his little story set within this treasure hunt in the beginning to set the tone perfectly. There's nothing to fear here. Um, once he escapes the natives, he gets on his plane with another cool character who we never see again, but for some reason we remember him. He's got the Yankees hat, he's fishing. It's just, it's just great. Um, and that's where we learn of Indy's fear of snakes. You know, you have a snake on the guy's lap and Indy's scared. I mean, who puts that in a movie? You know, you have this guy save the day, he just rides off into the sunset. No, let's add a character development scene where we show how this hero who just encountered, you know, uh, killer uh, in natives, uh, tarantulas, uh, a killer giant boulder, booby traps, and a bunch of, you know, things that could have killed him. Let's show how he's afraid of snakes. Oh, and we'll bring that back later in a sequence that it's just, it's just all of it. It's just so well done. I hate snakes, Shock! I hate them! Come on, show a little backbone, will ya? It introduces us to Balak, Baloch, as Sala would say. Balak. Belloc. And it's wonderfully played by Paul Freeman, uh, an amazing villain that is also layered as well. And that's the thing, a lot of these characters in his this movie, um, and a lot of Spielberg movies, but this one specifically, all are multi-layered. You have, yes, you have a villain who is is working with Hitler to find the, uh, the Ark of the Covenant, but he's a kind of a layered character who's interesting. He's not a Nazi, but he's working with the Nazis. <laughs> Nazis themselves are amazing characters, from Tot to the SS soldiers to the, you know, the the side characters we don't really interact with. They're just all fleshed out perfectly for this style of a movie. And what can you say about Harrison Ford? He nailed the role. I know there are other characters, other actors were going to get casted for this. It probably never worked out. Tom Selleck was one of them. Probably would have been good, but Indiana Jones and especially his chemistry with Karen Allen as Marion Ravenwood really just takes this movie to another level. Anybody can make a run-of-the-mill adventure movie. I mean, we've seen them, they've been out there. The Phantom, uh, the, the Sahara with Matthew McConaughey. I'm just going off the top of my head, so please forgive me, there's a lot more that have come and gone. But, uh, I mean, The Mummy, The Mummy's a good movie, but again, this it, you have all these adventure movies, but then to have someone like Steven Spielberg take it and then to elevate it into a masterpiece is just, you know, awesome. <laughs> And there's so much mystery in these movies. They're fun. They're not just so, they're not, they don't take themselves too seriously. That's another thing with Indiana Jones, especially Raiders of the Lost Ark and for the other movies. Um, not so much Kingdom of the Crystal Skull or the one that's coming out, and we'll get into that. But as far as Raiders of the Lost Ark go, there's humor, there's action, and it, it's just, the pace is so perfect. You have moments where you're rooting for Indy, where you're scared for the characters, when you're laughing out loud, the way Marcus Brody and Indy bounce off each other, the way, uh, even the, the most vicious of fight scenes between Indy and that big Nazi guy at the hangar at the, at the outside of the tomb in Cairo, uh, the way they fight, I mean, you're looking at this fight scene, you're like, how's he gonna take out this guy? This is a Nazi, these are serious people, but the fight's fun. Yeah, it's, it's the way it ends is bloody, the way you know Indiana Jones is getting his butt kicked, the way Marion Ravenwood is stuck inside the airplane and she's you know, firing people. There's humor sprinkled throughout here, and it, I wouldn't say it's slapstick, yes, you know, Indiana Jones gets a punch, he falls down. There is a slapstick uh, tone and accent in there, but it works because, you know, the film itself, like I said, isn't taking itself too seriously, but it's serious to a point where it's believable. And, you know, it just, it works, and you're rooting for these characters the whole time, and it just flies by. And you go from, Chi you go from uh, the United States to Nepal to Cairo, to an island, it just works brilliantly. And the jungle in the beginning, so you're spanning the globe in this, you know, I don't say brief movie, but I think the running time is an hour and 45 minutes, per se, and that's not that long. I mean, you know, yeah, it's an hour and 45 minutes, but, you know, think about what we cover in this movie. I mean, you have this huge adventure taking place, and there's not anything that they could add in or cut out of this movie that would change it for the better. It's the perfect pace and it's the perfect uh, length for the story they're trying to tell. <laughs> we can 
could talk about the cinematography done by Douglas Okombe. But the thing with the cinematography and cinematographers when it comes to Steven Spielberg movies is, yes, they should get the credit. This movie shot beautifully. It has iconic scenes uh, from, you know, I mean, from beginning to end, but some that stick out in my mind are some of the shots in the opening sequence in the jungle. Um, the scene of at the bar that Marion Ravenwood is uh, running, you know, you have the whole shootout, which is just awesome in itself. But, you know, after everything's said and done, after all the fight and the place burns down, you have Marion Ravenwood outside and the wind's blowing and the way she holds up the medallion, that whole scene. These jabbers forgotten how to show a lady a good time. Boy, you're something. Yeah, I'll tell you what. Until I get back my $5,000, you're going to get more than you bargained for. I'm your goddamn partner. You have Indy and with the Egyptians uh, at sunset from a wide shot, you know, the silhouette of him in his hat, you know, digging over the, the tomb that they're looking to enter. You have that whole sequence where he's, you know, has the scepter and the medallion and the sun's gonna shine, the way the music builds, but that whole scene being shot, the sweat on Indy, it just all comes together. There's certain shots later on that will just, that blow you. I mean, the shots are all over this film. And my point is when it comes to cinematography, yes, we have to give the cinematographer credit, but, in a Steven Spielberg movie, especially, he's deciding these shots. I mean, he is behind the camera. He's basically just using the cinematographer to interpret what he's doing. And that is the job of the cinematographer. But I would say Steven Spielberg is definitely hands-on. And he is the one coming up with all the shots. And he is in control. So, yes, we give the cinematographer credit. But this is a Steven Spielberg movie. And know that he is definitely involved in coming up with every shot you see. Um, and that is the director's job, but he's just on another level. And let's talk about one of my favorite scenes that I touched on a little bit earlier, and that is the truck chase uh, in the second half of the movie where Indy is on horseback and he says to Sala, Holy smoke, my friends! I, I'm so pleased you're not dead! Indy, Indy, we have no time. If you still want the Ark, it has been loaded onto a truck for Cairo. Truck? What truck? Love that line. And he basically starts chasing down this convoy to repossess the Ark before it gets to Hitler or gets to a plane sent to Berlin. This chase scene, to me, is the model for whenever one wants to shoot a chase scene in a movie. It inspires me. I always reference it when talking about chase sequences. There's just something about it that is staged so brilliantly, Steven Spielberg, that it just flows and it's so amazing, even being that many decades ago. A lot of chase scenes in movies now, what you see is a lot of cuts. Cuts to this, cuts to that. I think of the Bourne movies. I think of just, you know, a lot of the movies. I mean, the Mission Impossible movies have been very well done when it comes to chase sequences. A lot of Christopher Nolan movies. But there's something about Spielberg. He, I think, he just knows how this whole complex scene is going to be shot, even on the most minutia detail. <laughs> And it's fun. You know, there's, there's there's ebbs and flows in this. You know, Indy's coming in. He's on the up. He's kicking Nazi butt. Oh, my God. He's down and out. He's he's falling off the truck. He's under the truck. He's going up. Oh, is he going to come back? Oh, he's, he's on the rise again. He's coming back. He fights with the Nazi in the front seat. And it's those moments that Steven Spielberg is specifically good at. And let me just touch on that for a second. In his scenes, there's so much that goes on aside from what's going on. For example, earlier in the film, you have uh, Belloc and some Nazi soldiers walking throughout the uh, archaeological dig. Now, in any film, they could just have these three guys talking, you know, a couple guys working in the back. No, Steven Spielberg's gonna have a tracking shot that moves them through the whole scene, and there's just so much going on. And he adds so much busyness to his shots. There's people working in the front, there's people walking in front, there's a guy moving about, there's so much going on, but you're focused on the three characters because that's what he wants you to focus on, yet he adds this whole living world around it. And he does this in so many movies. And in the truck chase, he could have simply had, all right, here comes Indy, he's gonna find the Ark, he's gonna fight some people, get it, and he's gonna get the Ark and take off. No, there's just, there's so many little stories within that. And he adds, you know, characters, and adds character 
uh, fleshes out characters, even in the side characters, the one Nazi that's pretty tough and that he's fighting, you know, that guy goes through a little bit of an arc himself. You know, he's falling off the truck. He's hanging on the truck. He finally gets to Indy. He knocks Indy out. He's taking over. He gives a thumbs up to his, uh, his, the, the leaders in front, the people driving in front. There's just so much more fleshed out in a Steven Spielberg movie. So many more details that just add layers upon layers upon layers to a movie to make it that more real, even if it is a movie that we have to suspend our belief in slightly due to the slapstick, you know, supernatural aspect of it. <laughs> So Indy eventually succeeds in the truck chase and he gets the Ark of the Covenant um, and he connects with a pirate that knows him and they bring the boat on the ship to bring it back to the United States. Him and Marion think they're scot-free. There's actually a really cool Steven Spielberg one shot here uh, right before they get on the boat where Marion says goodbye to Sala and she gives him a kiss. It's one of my favorite shots in the movie and actually one of my favorite shots period and it, it's really memorable for me but you don't even know it's one take really. And just watch how he stages this here. Everything at last has been arranged. The Ark is on board. Nothing is lacking now that you're here. <laughs> oh, what is left of you? Trust these guys? Yes. Mr. Katanga. Mr. Katanga, these are my friends. They are my family. I will get of it if they are not treated well. My cabin is theirs. Mr. Jones. I've heard a lot about you, sir. Your appearance is exactly the way I imagined. <laughs> <laughs> Goodbye. Look after each other. I am already missing you. You're my good friend. Sorry. That is for fire. That is for your children, and this is for you. Thank you. I mean, you can go on and on and on about the moments in this film that stick out to you. You know, like I said, whether it's the temple in the beginning, whether it's just the, the map graphic when Indy's traveling, the bar at Nepal and the amazing shootout there, which we talked about really quickly. I mean, that scene in itself just is raw. I mean, the gunshots, it's loud, it's fun. It's like an old school, you know, shootout, but with a Spielberg modern, I don't want to say modern because it was the 70s, but a Spielberg twist on it that is just on another level. It's like you take these generic scenes that would be in any run of the mill movie and he just elevates it to another level. You got Marion, you know, drinking the whiskey from the barrel. You have Harris, you have Indiana Jones about to get killed. And what does he say to Marion? Whiskey. Whiskey. It's just fun, but it's, 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 it's exhilarating. You know, that's the best way I can describe these movies. They're exhilarating, they're fun, and they're just a, a I don't want to say a movie ride because that would kind of dumb it down. They're, they're, they're works of art, but it's just... It's a Spielberg movie. I, I don't really know how much I can say about it. You have the chase scenes in Cairo where Marion, we think, is killed. You have the, the, the Sala Indy uh, search for the Well of the Souls. We have them finally picking up the Ark. You have the whole sequence with the snakes. I almost forgot about that. I mean, it just goes on and on and on. The interaction between Marion and Belloc and, you know, their dynamic. Like, was that wasn't really, you know, nobody would put that in a movie. They would have bad guy, girl, must save girl, but there's a little interaction between the two of them, and it's just so well written. Evils. Not my friends. However, with the right connections, even in this part of the world, we are not entirely uncivilized. So Marion and Indy are now on this boat. They're on their way to America. They got the Ark in tow, and there's actually a really cool scene here where it, uh, it shows the... the crate that the ark is on in the uh the boat and it's just the rat is like kind of bugging out to it you got this great sound design that's kind of pulsating the nazi symbol is burned it's just kind of showing you yes there is power in this thing and where is this going So eventually the Nazis take over the boat, you know, with their U-boat, they take the Ark, they take Marion, Indy's hiding, 
and they're off to an island uh, with Belloc and Tot to go test uh, the Ark. Of course, Indiana Jones. I found it. Where? There. He always survives. He winds up on the submarine. He knocks out a Nazi, dresses as one, and then basically when they're on their way to this place on this deserted island, Indy threatens them with a bazooka, and Belloc says to him, you basically want to see it open as much as we do, and he pulls on the archaeological and interesting side of Indy, you know, because Indy does have a rush with these things, you know, let's not forget, he's traveling the world, putting himself in danger just to find artifact, just as much as Belloc is. Just blow it up! Throw it back to God. All your life has been spent in pursuit of archaeological relics. Inside the Ark are treasures beyond your wildest aspirations. You want to see it open as well as I. So Mary and Indy, we know the scene. They're tied to the pole. The Nazis are all surrounded. They're about to film this scene of uh, Belloc doing this ritual where they open the Ark. They open the Ark. There's just sand there. They all left. Basically, the power of God then reveals itself, kills all the Nazis, and Indy and Marion keep their eyes closed while this all goes on. You have the amazing John Williams score. Belloc uh, basically is head blowing up. You have Tot's face is melting, iconic. You have the other soldier's face kind of just caving in. It's really violent and really gory. And that's my point with Spielberg's diversity. We're laughing in this movie, having a grand old time. And all of a sudden, this horrific death scene happens to all these Nazis. And it's just, you know, very iconic. You know, everybody knows what I'm talking about. loud chaotic event and the winds blowing it's howling all the Nazis are dead you have this big cloud opening up into the sky on this remote island and all this loud noise all this incredible John Williams uh, score and notes all this wind is capped off by the top of the arc <laughs> falling right on top into silence and Marion and Indy are left alive having just witnessed you know that crazy event so we're back in America and Indy and Marcus Brody are demanding of the US government the people that hired him you know where's the ark what happened to it and they just insist that it's safe don't worry about it and he thinks it belongs in a museum but now we're realizing that there are other forces at work in our own government that are much more powerful than what Indiana Jones wants. Where is the Ark? I thought we'd settle that. The Ark is somewhere very safe. From whom? The Ark is a source of unspeakable power and it has to be researched. And it will be, I assure you, Dr. Brody, Dr. Jones. We have top men working on it right now. Who? Men. They don't know what they've got there. Well, I know what I've got here. We see that the Ark is now left in a warehouse with gosh knows what else. Uh, and Marion and Indy you know, walk off and uh, happily ever after. <laughs> And Indy and Marion walk off, and we're on to other future movies. But like I said, this movie is just, you know, it's a study in film. It's a study in master, master class filmmaking. The shots, the music, everything just came together. And if you want to see Steven Spielberg at his best, this is one of the movies to watch. Dates. <laughs>